Welcome to this session on electric fields and strength for the IB physics course. In this session we're trying to get you to understand how we can determine electrical field patterns and also how to calculate the field strength at a point in an electric field. So the diagram I have just off to my side here, this shows um, a kind of in a pictorial manner an electric field caused by three um, different charged particles and it takes a certain shape and has a certain style and hopefully you're going to be able to appreciate and understand what all of this means having completed um, watching this first session. So first of all let's think about uh, creating an electric field or drawing an electric field pattern. Yeah. Um, field lines are shown as these straight lines. I want to explain how they come into existence. Now remember, this is just us mapping some visual information onto something which we can't see. Okay? All we can do is experimentally work out what's happening and then we try and show it in a visual format of some sort. So the method is, uh, consider the path a positive point charge would travel if released within a field. So if I dropped a positive point charge anywhere around here I know that it would be immediately repelled away from this positive charge which is creating a field at the moment. So I've got to get that into my head and think about what would happen. And there's a set of rules which we follow. The rules exist is um, for this reason they start on a positive charge and end on a negative charge. Okay, So here they're just starting. There's no negative charge so we just have them beginning. There's no ending to these points. They go off and off and off into infinity for this example. They meet electrostatically charged objects at right angles. This being a perfect circle. The lines going out will go out radially and they should be at right angles to the surface of the circle in the middle. They will never cross each other. Um, for them to cross each other it would mean that a positive point charge would have more than one choice in its motion and that doesn't exist. It will always be able to travel here. It won't get to a point where I have a choice so there can only be one route to which a positive point charge can take. And the density is an indication of the strength of the electric field. What I mean by density there is if we think about close to this positive charge, that's likely to be where the largest force is felt. So that's why if I imagined that a number of lines in that area would be much greater than further out where the field lines are more spread out, indicating that it's not going to be as strong. We're going to talk about field strength in a little bit more detail later on but that gives you some idea how it's linked into these diagrams. Now, once you've followed these rules, you can look at far more complicated situations. So if we step up a little bit and we think about some situations uh, not just with a positive point charge, I can show you a negative point charge and I can show you some combinations. So if I have a negative point charge, all the arrows will be going towards that point and they'd be finishing or ending at the negative point charge. But they'd all be reaching that point, if we imagine it to be a small circle, at right angles. Things get more complicated when we see more than one point charge. Here if we imagine, imagine I dropped off a positive point charge at this location here. Now what happens, it would be repelled away from the positive charge the further it goes away, the more it will be drawn round and attracted to the negative point charge. So we have these uh, curling field lines, curving field lines. Um, similar if we consider the situation of two positive point charges. Again, just imagine what would happen to a positive point charge at any location. And we can see and follow those field lines. And in fact, if the reason there's no field lines in this middle bit, if I dropped a positive point charge exactly in between those two positive charges, it would be equally repelled away and therefore it would just stay stationary. So that's drawing electric fields. 
electric field strength now. So the electric field strength at any point in space. This is given the letter E, and it's equal to the force per unit charge. So it's how much force there is for a unit charge at that point. To work that out, all we do is we divide the force by the amount of charge at that location. So um, we recognize that the force, which should be calculated using Coulomb's law. So K times charge of one point times the charge of another point divided by R squared. But in this case, we then divide it by the second charge, the charge at that unit charge at that point, which causes those two Qs to cancel out. Actually, the electric field strength is just going to be uh, Coulomb's constant multiplied by the charge of the object which we're interested in divided by the distance squared from which it is away. Now, the key thing here is that you've got to remember that electric field strength is a vector quantity. So it has to have direction and it's going to be measured in newtons per coulomb or um, actually volts per meter. And we'll probably link in some thinking um, at another stage how that's related. So with that idea of how you can show electric field lines and how you can calculate electric field strength, we should be able to do a little bit of example thinking. Okay. If we had a charge of 25 microcoulombs, experience of force at 1 times 10 to the 4 minus newtons, what would be the electrical field strength for this point? Okay. So we know uh, what object we're talking about. So we've got a charge uh, of 25 microcoulombs, and it's experiencing a force of 1 times 10 to the minus 4. So recognizing here I've got the force, I've got this size of charge, so that means I'll be able to work out close that down, how big the electric field strength is. And in this case, I've got to emphasize here that this electric field strength is in the direction of the force. Okay, So it's 4 newtons per coulomb in the direction of the force. And obviously, that force would be shown by the direction of the field lines, which we're thinking about. Okay, two questions for you to try now. What I'll do is I'll let you read them through, practice in your own time, and I'm going to ask you to pause. So, now you've made those calculations, remember to be careful with that fact it's 1.5 centimetres here, and this is 1 times 10 to the... Uh, to uh, picocoulombs. So what I'm trying to do is trying to make sure you think about the values carefully in that first question. And in the second question, remember what you've got to think about as well as the electric field strength is that you're going to have to give a direction as well. So it's a combination of the resultant force and that will give you a vector. So the answers we're going to have here are uh, 4.0 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb, readily outwards. And for the second question, the resultant field at x is 1.0 times 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb um, at 1 degree below a horizontal line drawn through x. So you've got to remember there's a direction there as well. So there's some examples and some explanations. I hope you'll be able to use these to understand any problems in the future on electric fields